Welcome back to All Things ETH. On this channel, we talk about all things Ethereum blockchain. So we talk about projects, NFTs, play to earn, and price. And today, guys, I'm following up on my series on Axie Infinity cards with a Beast card uh, tutorial. So I've done plants before. Go ahead and check that out. I'll link that below. But also, I want to talk about each set of classes. So we're going to go into Beast mode here today and talk about beast cards guys. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and then we are going to talk about uh, beasts. So let's go to, um, I'm at axie.tech today. It's the same place I was in my last video all about plants and today I wanna to talk about beasts. So let's go to beasts in the class. And to get here you go to tools and card explorer, just a heads up there. So beasts are pretty meta right now, especially for season 19. They have a lot of uh, morale, so they get higher bonuses for uh, for uh, uh, combos of cards. So one thing you want to uh, just off the bat notice here is there's three S tier cards. They're just uh, they're amazing cards: Acrobatic, Hair Dagger, and Heroic Award. So Heroic Award I've not seen quite as often. I know this is. You know, these are used in higher MMRs that I've seen. I've honestly only been up to about 1300 MMR, 1400 MMR myself. Um, I run an Axie scholarship program, so I give away um, most of my Axies to scholars in order to uh, to make SLP guys. And I, I do a lot of other things. I'm a, I'm a pastor at my church. I'm an advertiser. I'm uh, a content creator, a photographer and videographer for agencies and clients in my area. And so... Um, the benefit of having scholars is it's relatively passive income. Of course, I've got to purchase the NFTs for the scholars and they've got to play and then I've got to manage them as well. They do a pretty good job of managing themselves and I just want to shout out to all of you who are my scholars. Thank you so much for, for doing what you do and uh, keep, keep up the good work, guys. So thank you so much for uh, supporting this channel by being a scholar and getting me a lot of subs and helping those in the in the scholarship program to do their best. So great competition over there, guys. But uh, back to Beast cards, guys. So what I did in the last video and what I'm going to do in this one is go by part type. So let's start with Mouth again, as we did in the last one. Now, uh, Gota is huge. Uh, Gota is one of those cards that really makes or breaks a game for the, the uh, holder of this card because it destroys energy. Now it not only destroys energy but gives you a decent amount of shield and gives you 80 attack. So it's a it's a massive card, takes away energy um, from the other team and then does a little bit of attack. So this is probably the most common. The second most common that I've seen personally is the Nutcracker. The uh, Nutcrack Mouth card deals 120 damage when comboed with another Nutcrack. So there you can play two of the Mouth cards or you can play the accompanying tail card nutcracker as well so self-rely I had this on a, a plant moving it, when I started an Axie Infinity had no idea what the card did didn't really understand what morale did at the time and it was just honestly a really useless card on a plant unless I needed to debuff him because that is you know a zero cost there um, did help an adventure a little bit to like debuff from some of the adventure uh, buffs or you know the slowdowns that you get in there but for the most part pretty useless on most characters however if you do have it on a beast it can give you the higher chance of critting because the morale of a beast is so high and so if you boost it in addition you will also get the chance of getting higher crit so the only time I would ever put that on a on a beast is if I had uh, Ron or Imp in the horn cards to try and get some energy out of some extra crits, but it you know obviously it could advance your ability to attack if you have the right cards. Obviously it have to be paired. It could be a debuff for you if you wanted to on your on your beast, but I, I just see Gota as such a more um, attractive card in this in this current meta as well as Nutcrack now. The, another one that's really interesting is Death Mark. So this, apply lethal to target if this Axie's HP is below 30%. Now, I will say that beasts are commonly not very tanky, don't have a lot of HP, so 
worrying about how much HP, like if a 30% left, if this is going to put the put the lethal on. And what lethal does, guys, is it gives you a critical hit, an, a, a guaranteed crit on the next uh, usage, so or not the in, the next attack by this axie. So, or I guess another axie as well. So if you could put it on for uh, for the round that the beast plays, and then you have a fast or a slower axie in front of you that's going to hit with maybe you know a, a cactus from your plant ahead of him that could be a possibility to 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 apply some a, you know a massive amount of damage you know i think when you play a uh, a cactus against another plant especially with you know the as, if it plays last and then has lethal on top of it it could be devastating but you have to worry about that 30% um below 30% range and it's just not terribly feasible so I do recommend uh, as this guide shares that Goda be your obvious choice for a mouth card on a beast if you want to use it on a beast so obviously there's ways to change up you know cards with different classes so let's move on to tail cards why not because I think the back and the horn are going to go pretty well together for um, for this obviously with Ronin Amp being one of the most ubiquitous beast card combinations. But Hair Dagger has made a huge um, run in this current season, season 19, guys. Uh, it draws a card for you, has 120 damage and 30 shield. And it's just, it's just one of those cards that really um, just brings a ton of damage, but also has utility. So taking a, uh, drawing a card when you use this is super important, especially if uh, in later rounds where you want to use cards that are very specific to the round that you're using them. So Cottontail is definitely a, a boost to your your energy and it's one of those things that you get on most like most newbies to to uh, Axie Infinity are going to want to go with a beast with a Cottontail just because it's the easiest way to guarantee energy uh, generation just like Ta uh, tail slap Nemo would be in an aqua card so if you want something if you want an axie that's pretty pure I would definitely recommend a beast with cotton tail unless you're going after some mega damage which beast cards beast classes in particular are high damage dealers so getting a, a high damage deal if you have good energy management like a, a serious leaf bug plant in your front line or an aqua with Nemo on the back or mid and then you want to save your your beast for your backline maybe and just use it as a, a mega attacker get the hair instead of the cottontail but if it's a midline energy grab for you go with the cottontail or if you have you know the the Ronin imp combination I do recommend hair in, in on your uh, on your beast for the tail card now rice is is great for energy management as well um, it does have to be paired with another card but it also gives you 80 attack which is pretty awesome rampant howl I haven't used a ton great great uh, attack card a little bit of shield it's not too bad it's very similar to to nutcracker which is 15 per 15 uh, damage less than the rampant howl however it has the same shield and it gives you the ability to double up the damage or uh, go 20% more damage per nut card if you if you pair it with another nut card. So um, I have seen higher damage out of a nut throw if it's paired than I have with the Rampant Howl. The Rampant Howl bringing you more morale, however, could potentially give you more critical damage. But it's hard to it's hard to be strategic with these morale boosts, guys, because you just don't know when they're going to play into effect. So, gerbil jump isn't very useful. Uh, skip the closest target. Now, this I see it occasionally, but these backdoor cards, unless you have a massive amount of of damage rel able to deal in these after you've gone past this, you know, the the tanky plant in the front card or in the front position, it's not terribly useful. And I think beasts in general. Are just mega damage dealers or they're really super helpful for grabbing you energy so you kind of pick one or the other or have a combination of the two 
I wouldn't recommend trying to put a uh, a beast with energy generation and a backdoor. It's just not going to do you much good. If you want one with mega damage and a backdoor, maybe, but I'd really save a bird for that personally. All right, let's go to the horn card. Acrobatic is absolutely huge. Let's get rid of the tail. This this website's a little funny, so if you use it and you're confused why you still have tail cards up, is you have to deselect the tail in order to just get the horn. So it is kind of nice that you can uh, put two together, but I prefer to have one up at a time for this case at least. So. Acrobatic is fantastic. It it speeds you up your beast. Beasts are pretty fast, but they're not as fast as aquas and birds. So if you do play this, I would recommend using it against a team that's a little bit faster than you. And and acrobatic is one of those things that is really starting to be used in the in the top MMRs, guys. And I know a lot of people who are trying to especially get this on like a dusk with. Uh, juggling balls and, and, and twin tail just to maximize their damage but also their speed to be able to play this um, first against a, a a higher damage dealer like an aqua or to really destroy some something like a tanky um, terminator or something like that so Pocky is pretty cool um, It is great when played with bug cards. Obviously, deal 10% additional damage for each allied bug axie. So if, you, if you're playing a double bug team, you got a bug in the front, a bug in the back, or two bugs up front, definitely use Pocky with your beast card. Now, I have seen Pocky been, has, has been really extra um, useful on a plant, actually. If you have like a double bug with a plant in the front, it's a pretty useful horn card on a plant. Now it's a crazy, crazy, uh, you know, there's not a lot of them in the marketplace. It's a little bit like extra meta for, for this season in particular, but it is super useful um, if you have a double bug team or at least another bug on your team. So now it's not quite as useful as acrobatic to be able to speed yourself up, but if you're, if you're dealing damage, beasts are where, it, where it's at. And speaking of damage, Dual Blade is one of the highest damage cards in that you can get in a Beast class. So, even with, I mean, there's very, very seldom any cards that have this high damage with this, with any shield at all. Most, you know, there's, there's bird cards out there that do 130 damage, 150 damage, but they don't have any shield abilities. And so this helps a little bit. But then dealing 200% damage on critical strikes, gosh, if you could if you could pair this with something that applies lethal ahead of it, just it would just destroy. But obviously lethal would only go on if you're going to to have 30% or less uh, HP left. So that's tricky. So Branch Charge is interesting. Uh, I've not played with this at all. Honestly, it's a pretty new card to me. I've seen it played a couple times, but I don't. I haven't used it personally. Increased critical chance by 20% if chained or comboed with a plant card. That's cool to see chained and comboed in the same card. That's pretty rare. But um, so I could see this where this would be useful in a obviously uh, like a BAP team or a B or sorry rather a B BP team so bird beast plant where you've got a, a plant in the front line and you want to combo this and you use you know, maybe even a a, um, a serious pumpkin on your on your plants but then have some mega combo on your beast this could be super useful yeah, this is for a for a high be, high damage beast because the next card up here, I don't know why this is in D tier. It's probably because it's not a lot of damage. 80, 80 damage is not super high, obviously. 30 shield is kind of mid. You know, it's one of those things that I said in the previous plant uh, card video is that these these lower tiers tend to have you know mid damage, mid shield. It's not 
one extreme or the other. And I think a lot of people in this meta especially want to have a high damage dealer or a high shield. So it's, it's you're either a brick wall or you're just pummeling the opponent. So, and Mary Legion is very similar. Add 20 shield to this uh, Axie when played in a chain. It, you know, it's, it's okay. I don't see beasts using a lot of shield. Let's just put it that way. So a high shield card in a beast class is just not terribly useful. However, the Ivory Stab, this is what why I wonder why it's in the D tier, because it's so ubiquitous with the Ronin card, which I'm going to show you in, in the back uh, card section. And with for energy management beasts, this is pretty critical, especially if you're if you've got um, if you don't have cottontail and you want more energy management. So but if you want to the best thing to do with the Ronin is to add that imp card so that you have the ability to get automatic extra uh, energy. So, And last but not least we're going to the back cards which is going to have the Ronin. I wonder where Ronin's at. See Ronin's a C tier. That's interesting because it's an automatic crit guys and with the amount of morale that n morale doesn't necessarily only it in fact it definitely infects how much you crit not only when you crit but how much damage the crit does so not a lot of people know that so what i want you to understand is the high morale of a beast not only gives you a more chance of critting but when you do crit it does more damage so just try to wrap your head around that because when you're critting with a beast when that's and that's why you see a lot of morale specific cards in the beast class you know you have you have confident you have howl these sorts of things are just and and obviously the um what's the card uh that that applies lethal um, that will bring you more chance of critting single combat ronin is one of those cards that gives it no matter what if, if you use it with two other cards so it's it's an it's a guaranteed crit and when you have a card like imp along with the crit you get the energy so that's just that's why it's so ubiquitous but anyway and then woodman woodman power the timber card is interesting it's kind of one of those again it does give you a lot of shield for what well, you know, 80 shield is, is higher than most shield cards and mid damage, so 80, 80 damage is not bad, it's not great. It's just one of those mid line cards. So again, with, with a beast in particular, there's just not a lot of reason to do a shield. I mean, you could get a tanky beast. I don't, I'm not sure why you would because it would take so much damage away and really if you want damage, you want a beast. So I did skip over a lot of these. So the the hero card hero hero reward draw a card when attacking aquatic bird and dawn targets probably the hardest thing to do when playing a beast is to make sure your combos are great so having a card draw on your team to amplify your chances of getting a great combo for your beast is critical so having a pumpkin plant in the front line grabbing you cards when the shield doesn't break is fantastic. Having heroic rewards. Now it is a zero cost and, and I do recommend, guys, I don't think I talked about this too much in the previous video about plants, but having one zero cost card, and especially in a damage dealer is pretty smart. So this one or Cottontail. So if you're gonna be a damage dealer, use the hero. If you're going to be more of an energy manager, use the Cottontail and uh, now furry balls is pretty cool. So furry balls, this is actually more A tier, and I think it's A tier because it's going to be more commonly used on things that aren't beasts. It's going to be used on mechs because mechs have the highest um, skill. And every time you have skill, the more cards you combo together, the higher the damage that you're gonna get for that combination. Does that make sense? So what I'm saying is the higher the skill, if you combo more attacks together, you're gonna to get more. So because Furry Ball attacks three times, you get that that 
skill multiplier. So you see, you're going to see this more often on a on something with higher skill, and the two things that are higher skill are mechs and aquas. So you're starting to see this more on aquas, but you're definitely going to see this on mechs. Jaguar, I don't see terribly often. Uh, first strike when you're in last stand, you know it's it's great, but it's not it's not useful enough. It's similar to the the 30% rule on getting lethal on that card we talked about earlier. Sorry, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it's just one of those things you don't want to have to worry about. You know, you know, I don't want to wait until I'm in last strike to get first attack. It's just, it's nice, and it does deal 120 damage, does have 35 shields, so great attack, but there's just better cards out there, guys. And then... Revenge arrow, uh, deal 150% damage if this Axie is in last stand. Again, it's another last stand card. Doesn't really give you, it's, it's strategic, sure, but it's a little bit risky to use where Ronin just gives you an, a, an automatic crit if you play it with two other cards. It's not, it's not a question of if you're in last stand. So, if that makes sense. I hope this video is helped for you, helpful for you guys. I do like doing these videos, especially for my scholars, trying to give people a little bit more information on what the cards do. The more you can identify the body parts with the cards, guys, the better you'll be in Axie Infinity and the more strategic you can be. So knowing the cards and knowing the body parts that go with these cards is very critical into raising the bar in your MMR in the arena. So. I hope you like this, guys. If you like this video, you got some value out of it, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for the next one. And if you are in the United States and you love coffee and crypto, go to friedrichscoffee.com and order yourself a 12-ounce bag of roasted-to-order coffee sent straight to your door, guys, and use free ship USA. That code will get you $5 off shipping, which is $5 is free shipping essentially it's $5 off because $5 is our standard shipping to anywhere in the continental United States I'm sorry to those of you who are watching that are outside of the United States We do not ship outside of the continental United States yet, but hopefully we will in the future and with that guys I will see you in the next one